I feel like I've been waiting for Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio for so long that I'm so glad it's finally here and honestly I have to say it's beautiful. When I was watching it I had a bit of a hard time not comparing it to the Disney Robert Zemeckis live action version that was released uh, a couple of months ago. I feel it's a bit of a shame that both films came out very closely together. But I also have to say that this film is actually very different, partly because it's an animated film, but also because the story is quite different. And I'm not going to compare the two here, but what I will say is both are worth watching. So if you feel like you're Pinocchioed out from watching the Disney one, please still give this one a chance. I don't want to go into too much detail about the narrative. I'm going to assume that most people are aware of the narrative, but this did give a much more detailed look at why Geppetto created Pinocchio. Pinocchio being a wooden puppet to begin with and it's because he lost his son Carlo and the film spends a bit of time setting that up showing us Carlo and really making us fall in love with his character and then showing us the heartache when his life is ripped from him and the scenes of that are so fantastically done they're so effective and the image of the crucifix that fills the screen is stunning it's so powerful and so moving and I just knew from that point on that this film was definitely going to be something of a treat. And what followed after is a, a pretty traditional example of, of the story of Pinocchio who wants to be a real boy who's telling lies and his nose grows and, and eventually he gets himself into all kinds of bother. And what I love about this is Geppetto's actually quite annoyed at Pinocchio a lot of the time. and. He, he's not just completely devoted to his son. There is that animosity there that can maybe drive Pinocchio away. And I think that worked very effectively. Um, Jiminy Cricket is actually not necessarily called Jiminy Cricket. Um, he gives his full name at the beginning. And it took me a second to realise what the J stood for. Um, the character design of the cricket, I don't love. But also, I think that's because I love Disney's Jiminy Cricket, the classic green character. So I am understandably, but maybe unfairly, comparing that cricket to the other cricket. But on its own, you know, the animation quality there is is beautiful. The the blue fairy, wow, um, not what I was expecting. Really, really chilling. Um, beautifully so. Very moving. Um, I won't say too much more about that, but it wasn't what I was expecting because I hadn't looked too much into this film before I saw it. I wanted to go in with no real expectations and it was it was chilling and beautiful and very effectively done. Um, I think it's, it's wonderfully animated, gorgeously animated. There are some scenes that are so beautiful and when the scenes are bright and they're not foreboding, the colours are stunning but it also does threat very well. There are some songs in this. I will be honest, none of the songs really stood out to me too much um, as being something that would become a firm favourite, but at the same time, none of them sounded bad. I will say I don't love the design of Pinocchio. It did grow on me as, as the film progressed and I got used to it, but there's just something about, I think his face that doesn't sit perfectly with me and I can't I can't quite pinpoint what that is. I think he maybe just looks too too much like what a wooden puppet made out of a tree would, would, would look like, which is obviously not a fair thing to say because that's an accurate representation. And particularly when his nose has tree branches coming out of it, it looks fantastic. But yeah, it's just not exactly what I was hoping for for the design of Pinocchio, but that's more of a personal preference than anything wrong with the film. It's also an interesting look at what life would be like for the boy who couldn't die, and it touches upon the idea that Pinocchio may live forever as, as a wooden puppet, but those loved ones around him will die, and he doesn't really quite comprehend this, and it's definitely an interesting look at if you could have, you know, immortality but everybody else couldn't would you even want this not the first film to discuss that of course but i think it's something that they did well in, in enough detail a beautiful take on the narrative pinocchio as a character i liked um brilliant voice acting of course pinocchio is voiced by gregory mann we have a fantastic voice cast We've got ewan mcgregor david bradley and um, burn gorman 
Ron Perlman, John Turturro, Kate Blanchett, Finn Wolfhard, Christoph Waltz, Tilda Swinton. I could go on, but I won't. But the voice cast is fabulous and the voice acting is reflected in that. It's definitely a film that I'd watch again. It's definitely quite a unique take on Pinocchio. Not 100% unique. I have seen other versions of Pinocchio that have a very similar feel to it. But certainly compared to some more recent ones, it, it's quite different. It's exactly what I expected from Del Toro. Um, it's also worth pointing out that Mark Gustafsson is also credited as a director. I'm not entirely sure if certain scenes were directed by one director, if it was a 50-50 effort. If anybody knows that, feel free to let me know. But this is certainly marketed and even titled as Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. But I enjoyed it. It was worth the wait. Maybe it wasn't what I was exactly expecting, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And whether you're a fan of Pinocchio or you've never seen Pinocchio for whatever reason, I'd say it's worth a watch. If for whatever reason you watched and don't love it, please give other Pinocchios a try. But I have to say I'm pretty impressed.